The topic, Everson Griffin. The question, what will he bring to the Dallas Cowboys? Let's just get into it. So I think there's kind of this misconception that Griffin is a guy who all he does is use power to get pressures, which really isn't the case at all. I mean, it makes sense to assume that, you know, he's 6'3", 275 pounds, which is definitely on the, the high end for an edge rusher. But I really do think that what really makes him really stand out is that he can sort of use that power, but that's not what he relies on. He just uses it as one of the tools in his tool belt. Like on this play, he will be using power, but it's not just like he's going to just straight up bull rush. He's going up against Colton Miller. Uh, and the way he's going to do this is that watch how far to the outside he's going to act as though he's going. So in doing this, this is what he does a lot. He's very good at basically going to the outside, going to the outside, going to the outside. Uh, you you beat him a couple of times, but you know that you have to keep working in that area. And then he's going to flip flip it, get to the inside one play and beat you that way. And that's what he's going to try and do here. Uh, here, he's just going to basically just punch Colton Miller. He's going to get his left arm and just push Miller's uh, right side of his body. And because Miller is so far over, Miller, of course, being the Raiders tackle, uh, and because Miller is so far over in that direction, he's making sure he doesn't get beat to the outside. This now means that for Miller's right hand, which will be the key hand to try and block here, uh, you know, because uh, obviously it's a, it's a play to the inside and he's a left tackle, uh, it's going to be a lot closer to his body than it should be. It's a lot easier to block when your arm is more extended, but it is not going to be as extended right here because of the speed. And then you see Griffin is able to push him back. Uh, that arm was never able to get latched on, and Griffin gets a sack. Again, that's honestly, that's a lot of just a uh, sort of a technique sack and just, just kind of a veteran play more than anything. And if we're going to talk about techniques, uh, he's one of the few guys that can pull off a spin move. And he can he has one of the better spin moves in the in the league. Uh, going up right here, number 70 right here, one-on-one uh, -on -one matchup. And watch how the spin move works. So he starts off as though he's going to the outside. Again, similar idea. And so he has his left arm. And basically what he's going to kind of try and act as though he's going to do is get his left arm. And he's going to kind of act like he's going to knock... Uh, 70s left arm out of the way and then he can get around that's what he's trying to act like he's doing it's a move you will do from time to time but it is not a move that he's going to do on this play his entire idea on this is to get 70 as far to the left as possible so this way when he's able to pull off this spin move he gets to the inside and there's not enough contact to where uh, 70 again Matthews is able to make that play Jake Matthews that it, it's just a really good uh, play, I think, by if, uh, Griffin and how he's able to move so quickly, it's really difficult to stop. You know, the spin move, it's one of the most difficult plays to pull off, but if you pull it off, it's one of the most difficult plays to stop. But what I love about Griffin and what I love about his spin move is how much detail he puts into the beginning part of his spin move. Uh, on this play against 76 right here, uh, watch how he pulls off this beginning of this part where he's going to get his left arm completely around uh, his assigned man's left arm. Look at that. I mean, that's he's basically already doing this move. In fact, at this point, he almost could try and pull off this move. He's that close. But that's not what he's doing. It's all a fake. All he's trying to do is, I mean, you know, think about it. If you're this left tackle right here, what are you thinking? You're thinking, I have to get over there as quick as possible because this is bad news because he's almost past me. I have to make sure I can stop here. But again, Griffin can pull off the spin move so quickly. Watch how he's able to do it. And his assigned man doesn't even know what's going on. He's turned around as well. And Griffin is able to make the play. Just a really uh, tremendous play from Griffin. And the reason why I'm focusing on spin moves is, one, they're just fun. But two, uh, I think that this is something that we've seen Guys can still pull off spin moves later in their career. If you can still make a spin move, uh, you can have a long career. And L Griffin's not that old. He's 32. I mean, I do think that it's kind of weird how it took this long for him to get signed. Part of me wonders if he was expecting like a $12 million deal or something, and that just wasn't on the table. But, I mean, I think he'll be great. Like, I, I don't think this—I think this is a really good move for Dallas, a really good buy low type of move. He can be effective in the running game as well. This one, it's uh, going up one-on-one -on -one against 75 right there. 
And uh, what he's going to do is that basically I want, what I want you to take a look at is his explosiveness off the line. Again, he is not some guy who is just a rock out there. He is someone who can move. And watch how quickly he's going to get the hand placement he wants. Again, it's hard to see exactly what it is. Uh, there's the pull in the way. It doesn't really matter too much. What I really want you to – what was the real, the real reason I'm showing this play is just his footwork and how quick he got in position. He was able to get his right hand uh, sort of to the outside so he can get around this tackle with ease. And now he's going to be able to run over and make a tackle uh, and make the play. So, again – Really good run defender, not just because he's big. Again, I think a lot of people are going to look at him and say, oh, okay, gotcha, big, strong guy, makes sense. And while that is true, that is not the only thing that makes him great. He's made a living off of being a very agile, big, strong guy. One more play I want to talk about is this one. Again, one-on-one -on -one against the left tackle. And this time, he's going to pretty much just pull off a speed move, where for a second, he looks like he's not going to do that, but then just goes to the outside. And you notice his assigned man... Uh, he gets his left arm, and because of this quickness, I, he's not able to get his left hand exactly where he wants to. He ends up putting it right on Griffin's face, which, A, is a penalty. So Griffin has already done a good job on this play. But B, not only is it a penalty, it's also not exactly great hand placement. I mean, obviously no one would teach this because it's a penalty, but even if it wasn't a penalty, you wouldn't want to have your hand here in an ideal situation. You'd want to have it sort of on the shoulder pad. It's not very difficult. It's not very easy to push Griffin back from here. Plus, he's going to have to take his hand off quickly because he doesn't want to you know, keep it on there for too long or the refs will notice it's a penalty. So he is going to take it off and try to push Griffin behind his quarterback, but he's just not able to do that because now Griffin has the size. So that's where the size comes in. Uh, the speed comes in at the beginning part of the play, and then the size comes in at the end part of the play. Uh, and so, again, that's essentially just a speed rush. So he's certainly someone who can definitely use speed to his advantage. He can use size to his advantage as well. Uh, but uh, like, uh, I do think that this is someone who still has it. He was pretty good last year from Minnesota. They just The reason why they moved on is they have Indegabo, they have Hunter. They don't really need an, uh, to spend a bunch of money on a third defensive end, and it makes sense to go with the younger guy in Indegabo. But uh, for Griffin, I, I do think that he's adding something to Dallas. I really do. I mean, they lost Robert Quinn, so I think that this is kind of their Robert Quinn replacement. It makes sense to me. I have heard some talk now about, does this mean they're going to do a 3-4 a or a 4-3? Um, you know, it's interesting. I think this probably means they're going to do a 4-3. That's just what I think uh, because, uh, you know, there's been some talk. But uh, I just think that Griffin, he's someone who, like, he's he was made for uh, uh, to be a 4-3 defensive end. I can't really see him. I don't think he adds too much value as a defensive end in a 3-4 or as, a, uh, I, I really don't see him as a, a outside linebacker in a 3-4 unless the idea is that he just always rushing the passer and that's just what he is in title. Uh, but I don't see that happening. That's not really what you want anyways. And plus you have Jalen Smith, Van Der Esch, and Sean Lee. So I think that alone... 4-3 uh, makes sense. I know the, the Dallas defensive coordinator likes to run a lot of 3-4s, uh, but I think that you got to go with what you, the talent you have. So 4-3 makes sense here. Uh, and so I look forward to seeing Griffin play. Uh, definitely a big boost to their defense, I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.